I'm going to try and deliver three different lessons uh, for the content today. The first one is that mobile is actually not new. Um, it's nothing, you know, sort of, I guess, special now. Uh, and in fact, the rate of change in technology innovation means that really nothing is going to stay new for very long. Um, my, my role, I guess, in various companies over the last 10 years has been specifically focused around mobility. And it's only sort of, I guess, now that uh, my next step professionally has been in a way, uh, in a direction that's kind of moved away from being uh, a mobile specialist because in so many ways, particularly around web and online, uh, everybody's a mobile specialist now. So this was kind of getting into this, these mobile overlords and, you know, they've come and they've conquered and, but they're kind of, yeah, they're already sort of on their way out. But that's just the sort of the rate of change that we're having in technology anyway. Um, the population in terms of who's got a smartphone now, uh, it's still not, you know, everybody, but it's practically everybody. Even 65%, you know, is uh, you know is a lot when you take into consider that the entire population. But that growth, just in that one little piece of technology, that's not including tablets um, or any other type of, of tech. That's purely just your iPhone, your Android, uh, a, a phone that has the capability uh, more than just. Uh, your, your kind of your feature phone, I guess, platforms of just being able to make phone calls and text messages. I mean, who would have thought a device, that, a phone that just made phone calls? But purely just from a penetration perspective, the uh, you know the, the the rate of pervasiveness within our society with this with uh, with this particular piece of technology has made uh, huge uh, impacts for us over the last even over just the last three or four years. When 65% of us who have got one of these smartphones use it every single day, uh, and within that, I think the number is something like 48% have used it uh, more than five times per day. So it is, you know, really well and truly something that isn't new. It's something that is already very well entrenched in our uh, in our daily lives, in our social lives, in our work, uh, and in our education as well. 77% of smartphone users don't leave the home without their device. Would that be anybody here? Feels a bit weird walking out, you go, keys, wallet, with my phone. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll leave my wallet at home, that's fine, but as long as I've got my phone, that's, that's okay. Um, you know, there's that impact that it's had just on our, on our psyche, on our feeling of who we are as people. I'm, I'm not complete unless I've got my smartphone in my, in my pocket so that, oh, heaven forbid if I've got to wait for somebody for five minutes, at least I can check Facebook or at least I can, you know, check the, check, uh, the latest news or see how my Twitter stock's going or something like that. So I think, you know, in terms of where I initially started thinking with this session around mobile, it's very much beyond that now. Mobile is, is, uh, is, is a pervasive technology, is a pervasive device. It's made huge impact, but now we're we're really on to the next the next things. So so this idea around mobility, it's a it's a cautionary tale about the way that technology is now affecting us socially, uh, behaviourally in terms of our relationships. It's certainly a tale about evolution, uh, and I, we'll look at the rate of change. I mean, does anyone seen this this diagram? Uh, you know, we, we're probably another two or three species on from where this uh, this illustration um, uh, gets us to, but um, it's certainly kind of like in the realms now of you know mobile being very much about. Oh, I passed that one a bit too quick. Yeah, that was one one slide I added in at the airport this morning. Um, mobile, in terms of in terms of where it's at, in terms of its. Um, its own evolution as far as, well, what else can you do with a, with a device? I mean, really, if you're looking at the rate of innovation, you're looking at things mostly around screen size, resolution, you know, the new iPhone's just a bit faster, it's a bit thinner, it's a bit lighter, but I mean, heck, how many more of those iterations can we go through? Like, where's the, where's the rate of innovation happening within mobility? It's not really happening there anymore. It's now happening in other device classes and in other areas of technology. Uh, so all of these types of things that we now, you know, whereas kind of five, six years ago, everything was mobile, 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 smartphone, smartphone, iPhone, iPhone. Now there's, that, that's, that's very much passe. It's very much, I guess, part of the course. 
And there's a lot of other things that we're talking about. So let's just look at, I guess, the evolution in terms of you know, moving from desktop to portable computing. Mobility, you can see there, just purely from a scale and a form factor perspective, mobility is what came next. Tablets, everyone got a phablet? You know, I'm going to own up and say they've got a phablet. <laughs> Do you call it a phablet? No, <laughs> that's right. That's only for nerds like myself that call them phablets. Phablets are, the, you know, just again that, that, an example of an iteration of uh, of a technology rather than a, a revolution or a really new innovation. It's just more iteration. After we've kind of like had this this flood of touchscreen devices, uh, and I was just mentioning to someone before, bulk of my mobile work started pre-iPhone, so back when you know every phone still had buttons on the screen. Uh, once we've now got this pervasive uh, ecology of touchscreen devices, uh, the cloud came along in terms of powering applications uh, on the internet for those particular devices. Around about the same time, we've got smart TVs, wearable technology. If you want to talk about the next kind of wave of innovation, you know, there's a lot of people putting a lot of money into wearable technology. Things like Google Glass, the, you know, the, the, the rumoured and fabled mystical iWatch, uh, if, if, if that ever happens. Uh, but you know, Samsung Galaxy Gear watches, wearable technology, not just purely from gadgets being bolted onto different parts of your body, but where it will be embedded in clothing. Uh, those Nike shoes, Rather than the fuel band or the, the sorry the fuel band what um, uh, wrist um, monitor, you know those those sensors just being in a pair of running shoes to, to capture the same sort of thing. Um, so really, what comes next is uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of people a lot of people spending a lot of time and effort and money trying to work out what that next what that next thing is. So the lesson around mobile being you know not so new anymore, very much. Uh, is a lesson for us to understand in terms of where certainly our users are, if you're talking about kids in the classroom, uh, maybe not because of the tools that they're using within the classroom, but certainly within their lives. Um, this is the world that we're working within. The second lesson is that these trends, while they're really young, have had massive impact uh, on, on our society. Uh, if we go back to sort of like our map of where things have gone to from the humble desktop through to kind of the more, the more latest uh, innovations, and we just overlay there a bit of a timeline, you know, the things that have happened, you know, kind of since iPhone is kind of like BC, AD and in the year of our Steve kind of point in time where the iPhone came about and everything sort of changed. Uh, and for me, I really felt that I mentioned before about doing a lot of work on devices with keypads. Well, the iPhone came along and totally rewrote the rule book as far as the industry I was working in. That business ceased to exist purely because uh, of what you know, re what uh, revolutionised uh, the, the mobile space. But you know, we're only talking about in the last five, six, seven years. I mean, look at the before that. We had sort of computers, and computers just did what they did, and you know monitors got a bit bigger and heavier until the flat screens came out. There wasn't really a lot of innovation there, so these are very young trends. But you think about the impact that uh, that iPhone or tablets have had, uh, or the cloud has had on uh, on technology and innovation. You know, it's revolutionised communication, where it's it's no longer, as I said before, about devices that make phone calls, but you know, this is how communication is happening on these devices in, in, in bite-sized little bursts of information that, that in you know, Snapchat's case disappears as, almost as soon as you've written it. It's had massive uh, you know, impact on, I guess, our social world, how we connect via devices, uh, whereas you know, before it was about, well, how many names have you got on your address book? Or a phone used to be marketed based on how many numbers it could store. You know, the new Nokia N95 save a hundred names. Whoa, it's fantastic. You know, whereas you know, address books are kind of gone, and we talk about devices and and uh, and communication and and keeping in touch with our our contacts, our peers, our friends. Uh, this is much more likely to be the landscape that that the users are uh, are operating within. In terms of social, uh, this was a stat that I came across, which. As the, the, the father of three girls, the youngest being nine, um, she's definitely not on Facebook just yet. 
but trying to think about her along with 5 million other Facebook users being under the age of 10. You know, these are, these are, this is the next generation of digital natives, if you want to call them that, that are starting, you know, well and truly before, uh, before a lot of, I guess, what we would perceive as being the age that we get them and starting to introduce how technology helps with their learning and, and these types of things. They're, when they're proficient Facebook users before they're the age of 10, that's a, that's a super user of, uh, of, and a super, un uh, a super understanding of social connectivity um, before they're sort of out of grade four. You know, that's, that's incredible. This technology has had a, a huge impact on commerce and the way that we think about how we interact with, with brands in terms of transactional um, behaviours. So being able to go up and take photos of, of photos of uh, the meat that I want to buy, not even the real meat anymore. I just take a photo of that and add it to my cart and then by the time I get home from the train station where this is located, uh, the, the local store has been able to deliver that to my, to my door and I've got, I've got that food ready to go. Uh, incredible amount of impact uh, and change that's being brought through the, 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 uh, the commerce industry. Uh, you know, that similar sort of uh, statistic around 65% of people who have bought something on a mobile device. Uh, that the, the rate of growth in that particular area alone is, is incredible. So I guess in terms of talking about education, one, one of my, um, I guess, most immediate uh, experiences has been with my oldest daughter. She's 14. Uh, at the school that she attends, it's compulsory to have an iPad from year 7 uh, all the way through to year 12. So she's very excited about getting her iPad and going through the, the P-plate program that you've got to complete before you get your, your license to use a device uh, that, 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 uh, within the school environment. You know, and then there's that whole cyber safety aspect of that learning and it's about you know, um, appropriate use and that type of thing. But one of the big benefits that I've noticed for her is, is uh, on some particular days, you know, the bag weighed an absolute ton. You know, it was kind of she's dragging this thing into the car and she's walking into the car. <laughs> And then just in the last little while, I've just noticed some morning she just gets in and it's, there's like nothing in it. I said, where's, what's, where's all your stuff? She goes, oh, all the classes I've got today, all the textbooks are on my iPad. Now that's, uh, you know, to, to me, that, that's kind of one of the, a very practical kind of outcome of, of uh, this rate of change of, of technology. But it, it's certainly starting to bring into focus, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of various areas of impact, particularly within the education uh, environment, not just from a, well, how is content delivered or how do, I, uh, how do I consume content and how do I create content for back for assessment and that type of thing, but it's really affecting uh, the students' lives.